Está bastante claro que cuando Elon Musk afirmó que Grow 3 es la inteligencia artificial más avanzada del mundo, no estaba simplemente subiéndose al tren del hype. Hoy ha presentado Grok 3, que según diversas pruebas de rendimiento, se sitúa como la IA más inteligente hasta la fecha. En este vídeo voy a repasar todos los anuncios clave que necesitas conocer sobre Grok 3 y te mostraré por qué realmente es la IA más avanzada en su estado actual. Uno de los aspectos más importantes que la mayoría de la gente querrá analizar, por supuesto, son los benchmarks. Si echamos un vistazo a Grok 3, el modelo sin capacidad de razonamiento, podemos ver que sus resultados en los benchmarks son realmente impresionantes en todos los aspectos. Es evidente que tanto Grok 3 como su versión mini superan a modelos de última generación como Gemini 2, Dipsy V3, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet y el reciente actualizado GPT-4. Esto es algo verdaderamente increíble, y aunque algunos puedan cuestionar la relevancia de los benchmarks, más adelante el equipo explica por qué decidieron utilizar nuevas pruebas y someter a Grok 3 a ellas, donde nuevamente obtuvo resultados sobresalientes. Todo apunta a que esta gigantesca fase de entrenamiento ha conseguido hacer que el modelo sea aún más inteligente, y las leyes de escalabilidad siguen demostrando ser altamente efectivas. Of our benchmark numbers, so we evaluate the Grok 3 on you know three different categories: on general mathematical reasoning, on general knowledge about STEM and science, and then also on computer science coding. So, Amy, uh, American Invitational Math Examination, uh, hosted you know once a year, uh, and if we evaluate the model performance, we can see that the Grok 3 across the board is in a league of its own, even its little brother. Grok 3 Mini is reaching the frontier across all the other competitors. So you would say, well, at this point, all these benchmarks, you're just evaluating you know, the memorization of the textbooks, memorization of the GitHub repos. How about real-time usefulness? How about we actually use those models in our product? Otra cosa que me encanta del equipo de Grok 3 es que también han conseguido posicionar su modelo en el chatbot Arena. Si no estás familiarizado con esta plataforma, no se trata de una prueba estandarizada como tal, sino de un sistema en el que dos modelos de IA responden a la misma pregunta y los usuarios eligen cuál de las dos respuestas les parece mejor. Lo interesante es que esta prueba es completamente ciega. No sabes qué modelo ha generado cara de respuesta. Simplemente seleccionas lo que consideras superior. Con el tiempo se van recopilando los resultados y se muestra qué modelo ha acumulado más victorias. Y actualmente el modelo número uno en Chatbot Arena es Grok 3. Es decir, incluso en pruebas donde los participantes no están influenciados por el nombre de los modelos, Grok 3 sigue destacando claramente. Y recuerda, esto es solo su versión sin capacidad de razonamiento. Codenamed Chocolate. It's pretty hot. Yeah, hot chocolate. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, been running on this uh, platform called Chapa Arena for two weeks. Um, I think the entire X platform at some point speculated this might be the next generation of a, uh, AI coming our way. So, uh, how this Chapa Arena works is that um, it strips away the entire product surface, right? It's just raw comparison of the engine of those AGIs, the language models themselves and place the interface where the user will submit one single query and you get to show two responses. You don't know which model they come from and in the end you make the vote. So in this blind test, Grok 3, an early version of Grok 3, already reached like 1400. No other models has reached an ELO score, head-to-head -head comparison to all the other models at this score. And it's not just one single category, it's 1400 aggregated across all the categories in chatbot capabilities, instruction following, coding. So It's number one across the board in this blind test. And it's, it's still climbing, so we actually have to keep updating it. So it, it's, it's 14, 1400, about 1400 and climbing. Yeah, and in fact, we have a version of the model that we think is already much better than the one that we tested here. Yeah. We'll see you know, how, how far it gets, yeah. uh, but that's the one that we're you know, um, working on or so talking it, about today. Yeah, yeah, so actually one thing, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're using Grok3, you, I think you may notice improvements almost every day um, because we're, we're continuously improving the model, so literally, y ahora viene la parte más interesante, el modelo de razonamiento. Estos modelos no generan respuestas instantáneas, sino que procesan la información durante más tiempo antes de responder. Si no estás familiarizado con esta técnica, la razón detrás de esto es que permite a la IA reflexionar más, lo que se traduce en respuestas de mayor calidad, 
más precisas y capaces de abordar problemas más complejos. Como industria estamos avanzando en esta dirección porque está demostrando ser un enfoque prometedor y, probablemente, el camino hacia una IA realmente inteligente. Si analizamos las capacidades de razonamiento de Grok 3, sus modelos de pensamiento también han logrado superar a 03 Mini, que hasta hace poco muchos consideraban la IA más avanzada del mundo. Sin embargo, ahora ha quedado relegada a segundo lugar. Por cierto, voy a tener la newsletter más grande sobre ella en español y para que veas que voy en serio, voy a estar regalando esta masterclass sobre mi journey y este curso sobre DeepSeek o, no sé, todos estos documentos y descuentos a todos los usuarios gratis de la newsletter. Lo único que tienes que hacer es registrarte con tu correo electrónico mediante el enlace en la descripción. Y tranquilo, no mandamos publicidad. Solo te mandaremos dos reportes semanales con nuevas noticias, estudios, nuevos empleos, herramientas y mucho más. Alertaia.com. Solo para los que no se quieren quedar atrás. So, let's see how Grog does on those interesting, challenging benchmarks. Uh, so, yeah, so reasoning, again, refers to those models that actually thinks quite for quite a long time before it tries to solve a problem. So, In this case, uh, you know, around a month ago, the Graph 3 pre-training finishes. So after that, we've worked very hard to put the reasoning capability into the uh, current Graph 3 model. But again, this is very early days, so the model is still currently in training. So right now, what we are going to show to people is this beta version of the Graph 3 reasoning model. Alongside, we also are training a mini version of the reasoning model. So essentially, on this plot, you can see Uh, the Graph 3 Reasoning Beta and then Graph 3 Mini Reasoning. The Graph 3 reasoning, Mini Reasoning is actually a model that we train for much longer time, and you can see that sometimes it actually performs slightly better compared to the Graph 3 Reasoning. This also just means that there's a huge potential for the Graph 3 Reasoning because it's trained for much less time. Um, so, all right, so let's actually look at what, how, how it does on those three benchmarks. <clears throat> so Jimmy also introduced already, so essentially we're looking at three different areas. Mathematics, science, and coding. Um, and for math, we're picking this high school competition math problem. Um, for science, we actually pick those PhD level science questions. Um, and for coding, it's also actually pretty challenging. It's competitive coding and also some uh, lead code, which is some code inter interview problems that people usually get when they interview for companies. So on those benchmarks, you can see that the Graph 3 actually performed quite well uh, across the board compared to other competitors. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty promising. These models are very smart. Yeah. Yeah. So Tony, what, what, what are those uh, shaded bars? Yeah, so okay, so uh, I'm glad you asked this question. So for those models, because it can reason, it can think, you can also ask them to even think longer. Uh, you can spend more what we call test and compute, which means you can spend more time to reason, to think about a problem before you spit out the answer. So in this case, the shaded bar here means that we just uh, ask the model to spend more, more time. You know, it can solve the, the same problem many, many times before it, it tries to conclude what is the right solution. And once you give this compute or this, this kind of budget to the model, it turns out the model can even perform better. So this is uh, essentially the sh shaded bar in, the, in those plots. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think this is really exciting, right? Because now, instead of just doing one chain of thoughts with AI, Why not do multiple exactly. all at once? Yes. So that's a very yes. powerful technique that allows to continue to scale the model capabilities after training. Um, and you know, people often ask, are we actually just overfitting to the best? También querían comprobar si esto era simplemente el resultado de haber entrenado el modelo durante mucho tiempo con una enorme cantidad de datos. Es decir, si se trataba de un caso sobre ajuste, donde básicamente la IA solo memoriza partes de las pruebas. Para descartar esto, decidieron evaluarlo con el nuevo conjunto de pruebas AM2015. Y los resultados fueron bastante sorprendentes. Y, um, you know, la gente just overfitting to the benchmarks? Yes. So, how about yes. generalization? So, yes, I think, uh, yeah, this is definitely a question that we are asking ourselves, whether we are overfitting to those current benchmarks. Uh, luckily, Uh, we have a real test. So about five days ago, Amy 2025 just finished. This is where high school com students compete in this particular benchmark. So we got this very fresh new competition, and then we asked our two models to compete on the same benchmark, at the same exam. And it turns out, uh, very interestingly, the Graph 3 reasoning, the big one, um, actually does uh, better. Um, 
on this particular new fresh exam. This also means that the generalization capability of the big model is stronger, much stronger, compared to the smaller model. Uh, if you compare it to the last year's exam, actually this is the opposite. The smaller model kind of learns the, uh, the, the previous exams better. So yeah, so this, this actually shows some kind of true generalization from the model. That's yeah. right. So 17 months ago, our Grok 0 and Grok 1 barely solves any high school problems. That's right. And now we have a kid that just already graduated. The Grok, Grok is ready to go to college. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it won't be long before it's simply perfect. The human exams won't be hard. They'll be too easy. Yeah. Like, and internally, we actually, as the Grok continues to evolve, uh, we're going to talk about you know, what we're excited about. But very soon, there will be no more benchmark left. Yeah. Ahora veamos estas capacidades de razonamiento en acción para mostrarte de verdad lo que estos modelos son capaces de hacer. Yeah, is to plot a viable trajectory to do a transfer uh, from Earth to Mars, and then uh, at a later point in time, a transfer back from Mars to Earth. Um, and that requires some, you know, some physics that Grok will have to understand. Um, so we're going to challenge Grok, you know, come up with a viable trajectory, uh, calculate it, uh, and then plot it for us so we can see it. And um, yeah, this is totally unscripted, yeah, by this, the way. This is the, that's the entirety of the prompt, which, which should be clarified, is that yeah. there's, there's nothing more than that. Yeah, exactly. This is the Grok interface, and we've typed in this text that you can see here, generate code for an animated 3D plot of a launch from Earth, uh, landing on Mars, and then back to Earth at the next launch window. Um, and we've now kicked off the query, and you can see Grok is thinking. So uh, part of Grok's advanced reasoning capabilities are these thinking traces that you can see here. You can even go inside and uh, actually read what Grok is thinking as it's going through the problem, as it's trying to solve it. Um, yeah, we, we, should say, like, we are doing some obscuration of the thinking so that our model doesn't get totally copied instantly. Um, so there's more to the thinking than is displayed. Uh, yeah. yeah, and be, because this is totally unscripted, there's actually a chance that Grok might make a little... Ahora, Grok 3 ha entrado en la era de los agentes de IA, algo que sinceramente no me sorprende. Los agentes de IA son la gran tendencia para 2025 y los años venideros. En este contexto ha lanzado una nueva herramienta que curiosamente sigue la misma línea de nombres que otras compañías. En este caso la han llamado Deep Search, algo que ya hemos visto antes con nombres similares en otros productos. Um, so today we're actually introducing a new product called Deep Search. That is the first generation of our Grok agents that not just helping the engineers and researchers and scientists to do coding, but actually help everyone to answer questions that you have day to day. It's a kind of like a next generation search engine that really help you to understand the universe. So you can start asking questions like, for example, hey, when is the next Starship launch day, for example? Um, so let's try that, if we get the answer. Um, on the left-hand side, we see uh, a high-level progress bar. Essentially, you know, the model not only is going to do one single search, like the current rack system, but actually thought very deeply about, hey, what's the user intent here? And what are the facts I should consider at the same time? And how many different websites I should actually go and read their content, right? So this is, can really save hundreds of hours of everyone's Google time if you want to really look into certain topics. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the bullet summaries of how the current model uh, you know, is doing, what websites browsing, what sources verifying, and oftentimes actually cross-validate different sources out there. Uh, to make sure the answer is actually correct before it's output final answer. And we can, you know, at the same time, fire up a few more queries. Um, how about, you know, Elon, you're a gamer, right? So, uh, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, so how about what are some of the best builds, the most popular builds in uh, uh, Pathway Excel? Hardcore, right? How hardcore league. That, I mean, you, can, I you can technically just look at the hardcore ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a fast way to figure it out. Yeah, we'll see what the model does. <laughs> um, and then we can also do... Uh, you know, uh, something more fun. For example, um, how about like make a prediction about the March Madness out there? Yeah, so this is kind of a fun one where um, Warren Buffett has a billion dollar bet. If you can exactly match the, I think the, 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 the sort of the entire winning tree of March Madness, you can win a billion dollars from Warren Buffett. So like it would be pretty cool if AI could help you win 
a billion dollars from Buffett. <laughs> That seems like a pretty good investment. Let's go. Otra función interesante de Deep Search es que permite visualizar la cadena de razonamiento del modelo. Esto significa que si la IA no te da la respuesta que esperabas, puedes ver cómo ha procesado la información y qué pasos ha seguido para llegar a esa conclusión. Me parece una característica realmente útil ya que buscan que el modelo sea lo más transparente posible. Y esto lo hace aún más práctico. Si no tiene la respuesta deseada, puede revisar su razonamiento y entender por qué ha llegado a esa conclusión. In this case, you can actually scroll through, actually reading to the mind of Grok. What information does the model actually think about are trustworthy, what are not? How does it actually cross-validate different information sources? So that makes the entire search experience and information retrieval process a lot more transparent to our users. <clears throat> and this is much more powerful than any search engine out there. You can literally just tell it, only use sources from X, you know, and it will try to respect that. Yeah. And so it's much more steerable, much more intelligent. I mean, it, it really should save you a lot of time. So something that might take you half an hour or an hour of researching on the web or searching social media, it, you can just ask it to go do that and, and come back and 10 minutes later, it's done an hour's wor worth of work for you. That's, That's really right. what it comes down to. Exactly. And, and maybe better than you could have done it yourself. Yeah. Si te preguntas cómo van a lanzar esta IA, han mencionado una nueva web llamada grog.com. Sin embargo, el momento de grabar este vídeo, la página está caída. Probablemente el hype ha sobrecargado los servidores y quizás no esperaban tanto tráfico. En esta web también estará disponible SuperGro, que será el espacio donde podrás acceder a la aplicación directamente desde su plataforma. Those real Grok fans that want the most advanced capabilities and the earliest access to, to new features. Um, so feel free to check that out as well. So this, um, this is for the dedicated Grok app and for the website. Exactly. Website. So, so our, our new website is called Grok.com. Yeah. And you'll also you'd find. never guess. Yeah, you <laughs> never guess. And you can also find our Grok app in the iOS App Store. And that gives you a, like, a more pol uh, even, even more polished uh, experience that's totally Grok focused. If, you're, if you want to have Grok you know, easily available one tap away. Mm. Yeah, and the, the version on Grok.com on, uh, you know, on, on a web browser is going to be the, the, most, the latest and most advanced version because obviously it takes us a while to mm. get, the, get something into an app and then get it approved by the App Store. So, uh, and then it's, if, if that something's in a phone format, there's limitations of what you can do. So the most powerful version of Grok um, and the latest version will be the, the web version at Grok.com. Yeah, so, so watch out for the name Grok Free in the app. Dead giveaway. So, Yeah, exactly. That, that's, a, that's the giveaway that you have Grok Free, and if it says Grok True, then Grok Free hasn't quite arrived for yet, but we're working hard to roll this out today um, and then uh, to even more people. Si has llegado hasta este punto del video, dale like, suscríbete y déjame saber qué piensas en los comentarios.